Hello everyone, my name is Mary Diggan and I will be offering an online workshop for Maitreya on May the 26th, dealing with moving from shadow to light, healing the heart wounds of grief and loss. And I hope you will consider joining me for the workshop. I am a deep imagery trainer and I have been for over 20 years. Some of you are probably familiar with the way of working with deep imagery as developed by Eligio Stephen Gallegos or Steve Gallegos, my husband. You've maybe taken a workshop at Maitreya with me or Steve or one of the other people who offer this work. And I'm also a mythologist. I have a PhD in mythological studies and all that really tells you is I love stories and I have been a storyteller all my life. And one of my great joys is to work with both imagery and mythology to open doorways for healing in each of us. Now this year the theme is working with the heart wounds of grief and loss. And to do that I have chosen three stories. As the main stories for the workshop and if you know me I'm you know full well I'm going to work in one or two other stories as needed during the day but the three main stories for this workshop are firstly the story of Gilgamesh the Sumerian king whose best friend Enkidu dies the second story is the story of Demeter whose daughter Persephone is pulled into the underworld and Demeter grieves this loss of her daughter. And the third story is an Irish story. I'm originally from Ireland, so I love the Celtic mythologies. And this is the story of Mish, whose father gets killed in a battle. And this process Mish goes through with the rage and anger and this total alteration of self into something else is a remarkably powerful story. I love the stories. I'm going to say that again. I just love the stories. But what I especially love is working with deep imagery and these stories, because that's what allows each of you then, who comes to the workshop, to find the doorway you need to engage with the story in yourself. It's what allows you to find the healing path through the story for yourself. And some of you, as I've mentioned, are probably familiar with this process, but you don't need to be familiar with working with deep imagery to come to this workshop, because I will talk to you about what to do. What working with deep imagery allows us and gifts us with when we deal with story is that finding of what you need to pay attention to in the story or what the healing path for you from this story is. And make no mistake, this workshop is about healing. It is about healing the heart wounds of grief and loss. And it's not just the heart wounds of grief and loss that come from the loss or death of someone, but it can be any loss the loss of a friendship, the loss of a relationship, the loss of a pet, the loss of a job. The inevitable losses that happen to us as human beings, because the workshop really is about that process. The root of the process will be unique to you. The process you go through is also unique to you. And so there's no restriction on the type of grief or loss. Now, the stories mainly <coughs> are, all, are rooted in the loss through death of something. Of course, Demeter's isn't, but often they are. But that doesn't change this grieving process that goes on. Gilgamesh has lost his best friend. Or, let me put it more bluntly, Enkidu. Gilgamesh's best friend has died. Now, Gilgamesh's way of dealing with it is to set off on a quest to ensure that he will never experience this again in the same way, or at least perhaps that he will never die himself. 
So it's a very interesting story of how do we engage with loss? Do we try and fix things? Do we head off on a quest to find ourselves? Does it open a doorway that we never thought could possibly open and would never have opened in us if the loss hadn't occurred? So Gilgamesh is this very rich story of loss, the big loss of Enkidu. But to be honest, there's a number of other losses that happen to him throughout the tale. And it's this wonderful examination or flow of what happens when you try and maybe fix it or when you seek yourself or seek something else. And maybe that speaks to you. Maybe you feel yourself seeking something in yourself. Maybe, like Gilgamesh, there might be a certain amount of let me move as far away from this pain as I possibly can. Demeter has a story that in some ways is also about the movement away from pain, but it's very different to Gilgamesh's movement. Hers is a movement that begins with puzzlement. And I really do think it's one of the most powerful aspects of the story. The suddenness of the loss and the not knowing what to do. What's happened? Where's she gone? What, what am I to do now? And maybe that is the core of Demeter's grieving because of course sometimes when we have a loss, the largest part of our grieving is not really for the other, whether it's the loss of the job, the loss of someone in friendship, the loss or breakup of a relationship, or of course, the loss through death that can happen, where the focus might be on this person is gone. Sometimes the real grieving has to do with the loss of me. I don't know who I am anymore. I remember that so clearly when my little boy died over 20 years ago because I was very invested in being his mother. And suddenly he was dead. And I couldn't be mother. So the real grieving I had to do was of me as mother and all that expectancy that was there. In some ways, that is what Demeter's story can open up. The expectations we had, the sense of who I was, I am, you are, that's no longer you. And how do you move from who you were to who you are? And Demeter goes through it in various ways. She tries to not be Demeter. She tries to be more contained, maybe shrink herself down a bit. She tries to find substitutes. She tries to do other nurturing and other mothering until it's finally there. I can never be Persephone's mother again. And then her withdrawal from the world. And what's that like? Have you ever needed that withdrawal? That pulling back where it seems like everything around you starts to die then? Because you are not able to participate anymore. Demeter has such a great story about that. And Mish, she withdraws too, but hers is into her rage. She is raging in it. She is so angry she alters, almost alters into another person being altogether. How do you come back from that? How do you find your way back to new life again? So the stories have these wonderful doorways and that's only a very small little introduction teaser there. But the real beauty of the workshop or the real beauty in this offering is that we can work with our own deep wisdom to find it, which we meet through engaging with the guides of our deep imagination. So you might actually find that there's an aspect of that story that really, really appeals to you. And by journeying into it, by meeting the story in our deep imagination, you will have a chance to really explore those aspects, to ask the questions you need to ask, to experience 
that story for yourself. There may be an aspect of the story you don't need to listen to at all, so that will be fine. There may be an aspect that's really, really, really important. Each of those stories will get their time for a journey. So you have three of them to explore fully on May the 26th. You may want to rewrite some of this. That may happen in your journey. You may go in there and suddenly discover that the starting point of the story might be the same. Maybe you find yourself like Gilgamesh, wanting to seek something. And your story, you as Gilgamesh, your Gilgamesh story is very different to his. And there's room for that. And primarily what I like to focus on is what can be healed for you. And the stories come to offer us openings that we may not have noticed beforehand. In that moment, as you listen, some part of it may grab you. And then your journey will say, hey, this is what you need. This is the healing that needs to take place for you. This is the exploration that needs to take place for you. And what I do is help facilitate that through the process of the storytelling and the journey and the listening afterwards. Because there will be time for that too. To speak, to be heard, to be listened to. And all of it is fine because each person has their space. Each person can be themselves. There's no template here of this is the right way to engage with the story. Instead it says, hey, this is a gift our ancestors gave us. Maybe not your direct ancestors, but some human ancestor told these stories. They said, once upon a time, this happened to Gilgamesh, and this happened to Demeter, and this happened to Mish. And then Gilgamesh did, and this is what happened to Demeter, and this is what happened to Mish. And then I come and I say, this is the story. This happened to Gilgamesh. And what is it that's going to happen for you? And so it's this wonderful dance between the stories and your own knowing, your own wisdom, your own imagery. And this wonderful opening up of the story into something that's really deeply personal for you. Grieving is hard. I know that. As I've mentioned, one of the biggest griefs I've had was the death of my little boy. It's been 20-something years. And yet, for me, it put me on a path that I would not probably ever have chosen willingly for myself. Who would? Who would want to suffer? And yet, as humans, this is part of our lives. So part of the engagement in this workshop may be to find the gift for you in the story, in your loss, in your life. Because I truly do believe that. I truly do believe healing is always possible. I truly do not just believe it in a sort of an abstract way. I have experienced it in my life. So I know healing is always possible. I know that loss can open doorways in us that we would never willingly have walked through, but they can still be a gift to us. I know how delicate and tender those parts of grief can be. So, the offering I make is for this engagement that is fluid, that is full, that has room for whatever needs to happen for you. Whether your dance is primarily with Gilgamesh or Demeter or Mish or with some other thing, there's room for you. If it's a grief that's old and ancient in you that you need to revisit, there's room for that, just like there's room for a loss 
that may have happened yesterday. There's room for tears. There's room for laughter. There's room for heartache. There's room for the rage. And there's room for the acceptance. And none of it has to be in any order. Because what's important is that you find the doorway you need. And the stories gift us with the unexpected opportunity, with the thing that, wow, I'd never have looked at that in that way by myself. But our ancestors did when they told these stories and they gave it to us then to say, hey, here's a story. And I say, yeah, here's a story and let's live it. Let's explore it. It's alive, just like you are. And allowing that seeking of our aliveness. So there is healing from grief, from loss. There is that ability, again, to let go. And I love this work. So I do hope you can join me on May the 26th. And that we can play together with the stories, that we can have serious play as well with the stories of healing, of laughter, of tears, of whatever needs to happen, of engaging with your own deep wisdom, of the deep knowing that already exists inside you that can show you what in this story really needs to speak to you. And then we have the space for that on May the 26th. We have the space to really be with grief and loss and with the heartache it has, but also with that movement, that movement that can happen in ourselves of healing, of growing, of moving through something for ourselves, for our embrace of our wholeness. For the return, perhaps, to living, or a little bit of that return to living. So that is what I'm offering. And I really hope I will see you there on May the 26th, as we journey, as we hear stories, as we hear these great stories from the past, and as we hear your story, whatever it is. Because whatever is there will be a gift to all of us. So I do hope you can join me on May 26th, as we move from shadow to light and work with the heart wounds of grief and loss.